Right, let's start with some international stories. First, where the wife and in-laws of New York bomb attacker Akayad Ullah, who had detonated a bomb near the busy Port Authority bus terminal, have been detained for questioning by the Bangladeshi police. 27-year-old Akayad Ullah was a Bangladeshi origin man who had been living in the United States for the last seven years. Meanwhile, the attacker has been charged with federal crimes of terrorism. Authorities have also said that he had entered into the United States under the most extreme remote family-based connection as the child of a sibling of a U.S. citizen. He has been charged with five counts of federal crimes, including providing material support to a terror organization, using and attempting to use a weapon of mass destruction, bombing a place of public use, destruction of property by means of an explosive, and also lastly, the use of a destructive device during and after a crime of violence. The Pakistan is set to file its response in the Kulbushan Jathav case today at the International Court of Justice. Some reports within Pakistani media have said that the legal team has compiled a detailed reply after holding consultations with all of its concerned departments. The Pakistan's ambassador in the Netherlands will submit the reply. Pakistan is expected to base its defence on the argument of ICJ jurisdiction in the case. The Republican Senate candidate Roy Moore has cast his ballot in the Alabama Senate race as the voting began earlier in the day in the United States. The race has rendered the Republican Party divided on whether to support Roy Moore to maintain majority or shun him because of his sexual misconduct allegations towards teenagers when he was in his 30s. Roy Moore has been accused by multiple women of pursuing them when they were just teenagers. French President Emmanuel Macron has taken a bleak stand in the fight against climate change and has also warned that we are in fact losing the battle. The Macron statement came at the One Planet Summit on Tuesday, which was aimed at discussing the two years of the landmark Paris Climate Accord. The US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has dubbed Russia's alleged meddling in the 2016 American presidential elections as an act of hybrid warfare. The US intelligence agencies have strongly maintained that Moscow did indeed attempt to interfere in the elections through cyber attacks and through propaganda material. The Tillerson was speaking the year-end remarks to the State Department staff. The Arab Israelis have taken to the U.S. Embassy in Tel Aviv to protest against U.S. President Donald Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital, which has offset peace efforts in the Middle East and has also upset the Arab world and Western allies alike. With Palestinian flags, protesters chanted, Jerusalem is Arab, and one of the protesters said that Trump's move was an obstacle for the peace process. The Pakistani nationals have admitted that their country creates problems for those Indians who wish to visit Pakistan. The Pakistani tourists visiting Kashmir via a bus service have urged their government to give quick clearances to visa applications by Indians in order to improve and increase the flow of tourists between the two nations. Now, three days after declaring victory over the Islamic State, Iraq's Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi has warned that the terror group might erupt again somewhere else without international cooperation in combating the militants. The Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi has said that we have managed to break them in Iraq but added that it's a worry for everyone that is and has this unfortunate ability to recruit young people very quickly. The EU Brexit negotiator Michel Barnier has said that Britain and the European Union will not be able to conclude a free trade agreement by the time Britain leaves in the month of March in 2019. The Barnier has said that only a political declaration outlining the future trading relations would be ready at the time of Britain's withdrawal. The US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has said that the US is ready for talks with North Korea without any preconditions. 
They're adding that the U.S. will continue its efforts until the first bomb drops. Tillerson was speaking on the crisis at the Atlantic Council Policy Forum in Washington. Now, Tillerson has also said that he's confident in the North Korean talks plan. Meanwhile, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has vowed to make North Korea the world's strongest nuclear power as the reclusive nation shows a little sign of watering down its weapons program. Despite global pressure, in a speech to workers, the North Korean leader declared that on Tuesday that his country will be victorious and will advance and leap as the strongest nuclear power and military power in the world. The U.S. State Secretary Rex Tillerson has also taken a sharp jibe with Pakistan during his address to the Atlantic Council Forum in Washington. He declared that the U.S.-Pak relations have deteriorated over the past decade, further warning Pakistan that it could actually also lose control over its own country to terrorists. Another nation that the U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson hit out at during his address at the Atlantic Council in Washington is Russia. But Tillerson has announced that the U.S. does not have a working relationship with Russia. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has also spoken on the American relationship in China, saying that North Korea represents the United States' first engagement with China. He said, as a result, the U.S. and China have four levels of dialogue that is diplomatic and strategic, economic and trade, social and cyber, as well as people to people. But he did call out China for its One Belt, One Road strategy. The United States top diplomat Rex Tillerson also spoke about India during his speech at the Atlantic Council Forum in Washington. He spoke of the increased engagement between India and the US and then talked very highly about India's booming economy. The European Union's foreign policy chief, Federica Mogherini, has said that renegotiating a nuclear deal with Iran was simply not an option. The Mogherini was speaking at a European Parliament's plenary session in Strasbourg. She said that the EU had made its stand on the issue very clear to Donald Trump, who has threatened to pull the US out of the landmark 2015 nuclear agreement and also levy sanctions on Iran's powerful revolutionary guard. Now, India's Supreme Court will today hear a case about the relaxation of the ban on the use of pet coke and furnace oil in Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan and Haryana for the cement industry and thermal power plants. Pet coke is a dangerous fuel that the United States has no, use, no need for, so it exports its energy, so it exports it to energy-hungry India. And the Indian government has said that it is against the importing of pet coke from the United States, which it has been doing so far. In an effort to combat corruption, at least 12 special courts will be set up in India to deal with cases against the country's elected representatives. The centre has told the Supreme Court that it will set up these special courts to dispose of cases against India's politicians. Now, the decision comes after the Supreme Court on the 1st of November had directed the centre to submit details regarding the 1,581 cases involving MPs and MLAs who are facing prosecution in 2014 in mind-boggling 13,500 cases. The scores of devotees participated in a unique ritual of worship in India's southern Coimbatore city on Tuesday where they whipped themselves as a part of paying obeisance to a Hindu goddess, Adekala Amman. And this 300-year-old ritual of self-flagellation is carried out by villagers living on the outskirts of Coimbatore to worship the goddess Adekala Amman, a form of Hindu goddess Kali.
Afghanistan's second vice president, Mohammad Sharwar Danish, met his Indian counterpart Venkaya Naidu on Tuesday in New Delhi to boost bilateral ties between the two nations. According to a government release, the two leaders held talks on cross-border militancy, Iran's Chabahar port and finding ways to enhance bilateral and economic ties. The Danish is on a five-day trip to India. After imparting self-defense training to almost 5,000 girls under its pivotal program Sashakti, Delhi police on Tuesday has awarded them at a ceremony. Now, the students who have undergone the training were awarded certificates by the Delhi Police Commissioner Amulya Pataik. The Commissioner has also felicitated principals of respective schools. The day after he was named Congress President, Rahul Gandhi on Tuesday attacked both Prime Minister Narendra Modi and BJP over what he said was their silence on corruption. Rahul said that earlier Prime Minister Modi used to talk a lot about corruption everywhere. But since Congress has raised the issue of Jai Shah and the Rafale defence deal with France, he has stopped talking about corruption. He also added that the Prime Minister was either talking about Congress or was talking about himself during his public appearances. The NCP President Sharad Pawar on Tuesday asked farmers to resort to non-cooperation against the Maharashtra government and to not pay outstanding loans or dues like electricity bills unless it deposits the loan waiver amount into their bank accounts. The addressing a public rally on his 77th birthday, the former union minister has warned that farmers were capable of bringing down the government if their issues are ignored by the government of the day. Now, search and rescue personnel on Tuesday recovered the bodies of eight more fishermen from the sea of the Kozikore coast in Kerala, taking the death toll in Cyclone Oki to 48. The decomposed bodies recovered by the Coast Guard and the Marine Enforcement Department will be taken to the Kozikore Medical College Hospital for conducting DNA tests for identification purposes. Now, India's consumer inflation increased sharply to 15-month high on 4.88% in November from 3.58% in October. Driven mainly by faster rises in prices of food and fuel products, the November inflation number is higher than the Reserve Bank's 4% medium-term target, reducing the room for the central bank to cut rates in near future. Economists had predicted consumer inflation to rise to almost 4.2% in November following unseasonably heavy rains that have sent vegetable prices soaring. The vegetable prices showed a sharp spike with prices rising up to 22.48% year-on-year in the month of November. The Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Chandrababu Nairu has torn into his political opponents on Monday evening for creating hurdles in the Pulavaram project. His comments, which came as he inspected the project, were aimed at YSR Congress Chief Jagan Mohan Reddy's recent remarks of how there were irregularities in the project. The Janasena Chief Pavan Kalyan has also visited the site at the beginning of December and had demanded the release of a white paper proving the state's accountability in the project. The long-awaited metro connectivity to airport took a small step closer to fruition as the Karnataka cabinet has approved the 29-kilometer long Nagavara Kempegora International Airport line. The line will have seven stations and is expected to come up by 2021. The cabinet has also approved the imposition of a user development fee of between 60 rupees to 80 rupees on airport passengers to partially fund the ambitious metro line. The BJP National General Secretary and Karnataka in charge, Murli Dhar Rao, has accused Chief Minister Sidramaya of turning Karnataka into Kashmir. He further added that the Chief Minister had used unparliamentary words about Prime Minister Narendra Modi, something that the people will not forget and will teach him a lesson in the forthcoming elections.
The Madras High Court has declined to pass any order on a public interest litigation petition seeking a ban on bullock cart race in Tamil Nadu in view of a Supreme Court order. That the petitioner has been directed to approach the Apex Court for any relief. And according to the petitioner, the Apex Court had passed an order in 2015 banning Jalikattu bullock cart races and other such activities in the country.